What's up guys? Well, hello and welcome to another video on our Sonoff uh, Wi-Fi smart switch is what we got here. We're going to be checking out how to take one of these and add to it an override capability where you can wire this guy to a normal light switch and be able to override it whenever you want instead of having to have your phone to uh, use the home assistant with it. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please stay tuned. It's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay, guys, well, we're going to go ahead and get started with this project by showing you guys the code first because I've made a code update. So those of you that have uh, checked out my GitHub down below, I've went ahead and updated the code to include uh, this as a piece. So if you want to add this switch, you don't have to, but if you want to add it, you can. The code will now accept it. So <clears throat> what you still need to do is you need to set up your SSID, right? You need to set up your password, your MQTT server information, the password and that. And basically what it's going to do is down here inside of our deal, it's going to basically check the override switch. So the override switch is on GPIO pin 14. Okay, so override is on GPIO 14 now. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we need to remember what state it was in. So that way uh, <clears throat> it'll work hand in hand with the, uh, with the home assistant as well. So that's all this basically does. It checks the override button, it turns it on or off, sets kind of an override memory bit, so that way it can check to see if uh, the if you've done it through home assistant or if the override is now different, uh, basically us calling for a different change and whatnot. So the code will be available, GitHub, link down below for you to get. All you gotta do is just basically hook up your uh, GPIO, which I'll show you how to hook up here in a minute and hook it to a switch and then basically put in your, your information in this section here and you should be good to go. All you got to do is plug it in, use one of the, oh, I don't have one with me, but check out uh, the link down below to my Tindy store for the ESP8266 programmers helper uh, to help you with uh, getting it all programmed up. It's a nice slick little board that makes wiring it up to program very easy because it's already done for you. So check that out down below and we'll continue on to actually wiring this thing up. Okay guys, so once we get it all uh, programmed up and everything, it is time to go ahead and build our uh, override switch. So we're gonna use the same switches that are in the walls. Um, literally, it just switches these two, these two poles when you turn it on and off. So this will work just fine. If it's good enough for 120 volt, 15 amps of, of AC current, it'll definitely work for um, just a little bit of DC current. So what you will need is you'll need all this stuff that I've got in front of me right here, as well as you'll need a resistor because it's gonna be a pull down resistor. So I've got a little, a little pull down resistor here. This one's 2K, you could use 10K, doesn't matter, um, just as long as it's a pull down resistor. You need a couple pieces of wire. Um, this is one of the kits that you can get off of Amazon. I'll have a link down in the description if you wanna check it out. But it has basically the crimp connectors and whatnot and even the uh, housing. So we'll use that to make it look quite nice and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get started with it. The first thing we need to do is we need to crimp on these connectors. So. I'm gonna get a couple of these out. And we'll go ahead and we'll crimp a couple of these on. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and insert these into a shroud. I'm gonna use the four position shroud because um, it's, I use the four position guy. We know that uh, VCC is on the top and ground is on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we will just, or GPIO 14, excuse me, GPIO 14 is on the bottom and the uh, other one is on the top, the three volts is on the top. So what we will do is we're going to have three volts on the top. So we'll put the black on the top, need it to fit in. Sometimes this gauge wire is a little bit a little bit hefty for for this, but I think it's going to work. Yeah. And place the uh, GPIO one in. All right, so there we've got the, the power, the VCC, and the GPIO 14. However, we're going to need one more for the ground, and then we have to 
connect our resistor between those two. So I'm gonna grab another one for the ground here. Let's grab a green. Okay, so now I have the ground installed. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to install this resistor between these two pins. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and put that together. So I'll put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on it, but hopefully you can so you can see, you can see the little resistor in there, but all I did was just tie that green wire and that white wire together with that little resistor. Now, all we have to do is plug it in. Like I said, now closest to the little reset switch. Uh, here, let's see if we can't uh, go in a little more. Closest to the reset switch is the three volts. So what I'm gonna do is I've done it with the black is the three volts on my my ideal, so I plug it in just like that. So there we go, and then these are the two wires that we will hook to our switch uh, here in a minute. So what I've done, back out enough here, what I've done is I've taken our little case and I've drilled a little hole in it um, that once this goes together, yeah, like this, that hole's kind of in this empty space that's right here, so that way I can kind of thread this on. So let's go ahead and do that. So we should be able to thread that through. Now we'll get our little base plate here. I believe, I believe this is this is right. It goes this way, I believe. No, other way. It's gonna go that way. And then we'll just kinda put this little guy back together. We have to bend a little more. We'll see if that will stay on. Or how we can do it and we may have to experiment with other methods so looks like it's not really going to snap shut with that connector however when we put the sides on it would screw it together so probably what i would recommend for this is i would probably just solder directly i'd probably take these wires and just solder them directly into the holes once you've gotten it programmed so that way it doesn't pop apart and have problems. So let me go ahead and get this together, be right back. Okay guys, so I got it all wired up and before you criticize me, I'm gonna say it, you need to hook up your grounds. This is for demonstrational purposes only. Don't ever have uh, live 120 volt systems out in the open where you can touch it and hurt yourselves. And if you're going to install something like this, since this is a line voltage, uh, device and uses 120 volt AC, you have to be very, very careful. Mind your codes and standards and whatever that's in your area. If you don't have the skill set or whatever to install one of these, please, please, please have one of your uh, local electricians or whatever come out and install this for you. Do not mess around with it yourself if you don't know uh, how to handle uh, mains voltages, okay? So that's my safety spiel. And yes, you, you have to hook up the grounds for this demonstrational purposes. I don't need the grounds, but if you were to install this professionally, you would hook up grounds, <coughs> excuse me, hook up grounds and all the other safety uh, features. This is just a demonstration to show you how this works, okay? So with that out of the way, first off, I'm controlling one of my, my bench lights here. So first off, we've got our home assistant. So I'm gonna basically turn it on and off with the good old home assistant. So here's off and on, right? Off and on. Okay, so home assistant totally works, home assistant works. So now, using that same idea, if I turn it off with home assistant, okay, so I've got it off now, but let's say I don't have my phone with me and I walk by and I wanna just simply flip it on. I can flip my switch, light comes on. And then if I want to, I can walk by, flip it, it turns off, all right? So that's basically how it, now this is set up as an override switch. When this switch is on, Home Assistant has no control over it. Now, if you want to, you guys, I leave all the coding to you. So code is down in the description at the GitHub. If you want to update this, put your own kind of code in it, that's the reason that I released this. I know there's Tasmoda and there's all those other different firmwares for these Sonoff things. I like to customize things. That's just what I like to do. And so that's the reason that I went ahead and built the software that I built and produced that out for you guys because I want to show you that you can control one of these and design one of these with the Arduino system which is awesome because the IDE is free you don't have to buy the compiler and you can literally make this do what 
whatever you want it to do. Whereas the TAS motor, whatever, you're limited by whatever the code is or the firmware is or the features of the firmware, that's what you're limited by. Whereas if you do it uh, this way, you can then use it uh, however you want to make it and you build your own firmware for it. You don't have to rely on somebody else uh, coming up with a new feature. Or if there's a bug in the code, you have to rely on somebody else to fix it. No, this is all yourself. But I highly recommend the other firmwares that are out there. Check them out. They are very simple to use. If you're just looking for something to throw on here and straight away use it, the other firmwares are fantastic. This one is one that's for those of us that like to customize and like to get into things and build it the way we see fit. It's like Burger King, you know, have it our way, right? So that is basically it, guys. That's how you create an override switch for your Sonoff uh, Wi-Fi enabled switch, or I would call it probably a relay. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed the videos. Definitely hit that subscribe button because when we get to 10,000 subscribers, we are definitely gonna check out some really cool stuff. We're gonna have an awesome live stream, giving away all kinds of stuff. In fact, one of these is on the giveaway list as well as a Raspberry Pi 3. Ooh, that's going to be given away as well. So guys, definitely check it out. Share the videos with your friends. Get as many subscribers as we can. We're almost there. We only a few, like a couple hundred subscribers shy of it or something like that. I don't know. Last time I checked. Anyway, definitely get that subscriber count up. Hit that like button so that way it gets the, the videos shared. And check me out on all the social medias. And with that, I, that ought to do it, guys. I will see you next time. Boop.